Steve Erickson, page 114. Sheila may have identity problems, but I don't. I know exactly who I am, and no matter what anybody says, I know I was born in New York City for a reason. Where else does the sidewalk tremble under your feet from the rumble of subways underground and trucks and city buses up top? Where else do cabbies and garbage men, bankers and businessmen all walk with a beat? Where else can you find grade A, top-of-the-line characters roaming the streets, spouting Shakespeare in the middle of a blizzard? And where else can you find Broadway? The first time my folks set me down in front of a Broadway stage to watch a musical, and I saw walls rising into the ceiling and staircases disappearing into the floor, I knew I wanted to be a set designer, and I wanted to work on Broadway. If you come to my house, there's hardly anywhere to sit in my bedroom or to step, for, the, for that matter, because the whole place is cluttered with hand-painted miniature cardboard sets I designed for imaginary plays. I'll work on real ones as soon as I get to college, because I figure there'll be plenty of opportunities to sharpen my skills working on college productions, especially down at NYU, where I plan to go. If I get in, when I get in, I have to get in. I have to get back to the city. Two months ago, my father announced that we're leaving. We're moving out. The city is getting too rough, he said. Mom's not sure she wants to go on teaching in public schools. She has decided to take a break, so this is a good time to move, he said. As for him, he'll keep his job in publishing and just commute from Yorktown Heights. I tried to pretend like the move is no big deal, since Mom and Dad are so hot on it, especially Mom, who's been wanting her own house forever. But man, I'm dying. I got friends here that I've grown up and gone to school with all my life, and I fit in here. And you can't tell me there are guys with bleach blonde buzz cuts and earrings in Yorktown. And what about the theater? There's no Broadway in Yorktown. But maybe that's the point. Mom's not too keen on my plans to work in the theater, which is no surprise. She's still trying to get over my wearing an earring, even though I bought the smaller one I could find. She freaked out anyway. I don't think Dad is too stoked about my plans either, although he doesn't say it because he knows I remember him telling me how he used to want to be an entertainer. He played drums in a band when he was my age, and had big-time plans of hitting the road like Ringo Starr and the Beatles and doing shows across the country. Then his family moved to Binghamton, away from all his bandmates, and eventually his dream faded away. Is that why they're moving? Is that what they're, go they're hoping happens to me? Just the thought of maybe never working in the theater makes me crazy. And one day I tell this story about my father to Raul, and I tell him I don't understand how my father's dream could just die like that, when what I really want to know is, can mine? And Raul says something that sticks with me. Maybe your father's dream wasn't really in his heart. If a dream is in your heart, you never lose it. After we had that conversation, I kicked my doubts to the back of the closet. Well, almost. I still go in there now and then. Part of me continues to be afraid of following in my father's footsteps, these days, though, I try to concentrate on keeping my grades up so I can get into NYU when the time comes, because one thing I know for sure is that my dream is in my heart. I've got two more years of school to go, two more years to hold on to my dream, and two more years of open mic nights. Well, one year and a couple of months this year's going by so fast. I hope I'll still have a chance to do open mic next year, they're so popular now. Every kid in school wishes they were in Mr. Ward's class. I can't blame them. We got a good thing going on here, and people need to know about it. We're sick of the negative press teenagers get all the time. Apparently somebody at the Bronx Insider agreed. Mr. Ward said they're sending a reporter to cover our next open mic Friday, and it should be a monster. Mr. Ward invited a real poet to come speak to us, and to read some of his work. It's not an assembly exactly, but 
Mr. Ward is having us meet together in the multi-purpose room for the special presentation. Pedro Pietri is the poet's name. He's in this book called The United States of Poetry, and somebody said he's a reverend. Sterling must be stoked. Anyway, I'm looking forward to hearing him. Poetry is the coolest thing we got going in, on in the school now. Maybe I'll still be around next year to enjoy it. Whether I finish up school here or in Yorktown Heights depends on my folks. Either way, there's a set designer's job on Broadway with my name on it, and I'm not giving it up for anybody.